no Christ, I would be scared right now. With all that's going on, everything that's happening around us. And the older I get, the more I realize that I don't know how long I have left here in life. Everything's great today, reasonably great, but it's that's not what keeps me going. What keeps me going is the same thing that's got Jeff and keeping him going right now. We have hope, way more than hope. Uh, the more we have Christ in our life and, and lean on him and the Holy Spirit, we realize that no matter what life dishes out to us, we're going to be on the winning side. We're not going to be on the winning side. We're on the winning side. The younger, I, I remember when I was 30, uh, raising my sons, and you get so caught up in the busyness of making, earning a living, taking care of the household, doing all of these things that we almost forget that Christ is even more important than that. In fact, if I look back now, I wish I could do that part over. I would stress more of what Christ can do for us as a family and less about what you want for Christmas or what can I get you for your birthday or all those things. Not that the fellowship together, the, the time we, we are spending together is not important. But everything takes a lesser place in our life when we see Christ and the Holy Spirit. That is the most important thing. And if you take that Christ and the Holy Spirit into your center of your life and you live with that from day to day, what an awesome thing do you have in your family then. So that's where I'm at. I, I had no idea what was going to be, how the service was going to start today and how it was going to move forward and how this fit in, this message today, with what God's doing here already today. The last thing that I would want to do would be to, to pull down what has already been laid. And it doesn't. God showed me here today that he picked the perfect message for what we've just been talking about. We get caught up in life. And it's all about us. And mine and ours and it's really his it's Christ we don't know and I'm just as puzzled at some of the things that God does but I don't usually get worked up too much because I know that I don't know very much as much near as much as what God's his ways are higher than mine and I can't understand but I will someday understand for some reason Pam is now with Jesus. And that's the way he planned it. I believe that he has our day picked. He doesn't just randomly look around today and think, I wonder whose life I can snuff out today. Or who can I can take to go to heaven today. He doesn't. He already had a plan. We're wrote in the book. We're already scheduled. The title of the message today is Lovers of self. Lovers of self. The text is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. You should know this, Timothy, that the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love the only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred, and they will be lovers, uh, unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel, they will hate what is good, and they will betray their friends and be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. 
They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from them, people like that. When it says stay away from people like that, he didn't mean stay away from people like that. He meant don't chum up with, don't spend your time with, don't get booked into that. We have to spend time with people like that so that we can turn them into people like Pam. That's what we need to do. This passage here, Paul was talking to Timothy. Timothy, he was a young pastor that was brought up with, with Paul. He was like his mentor, Paul was. And he wanted Timothy to succeed. He wanted him to tell the congregations that he was at the, the right things. And he wanted Timothy to know that at the end, that the time grows shorter, people are going to get further away from, from God. They're going to become lovers of themselves. As I shared earlier, how easy it is for us to be absorbed by us. We have jobs that can keep us controlled almost all the time. Money, uh, both parents, both people in the household, and maybe even some of the kids, when they get a bigger, need to work just to make ends meet. That's partly Satan's plan, is to get us so consumed with self that we forget about Christ. We forget about what we need to do. We need to be involved with Christ. We do that by what Jesus told uh, his followers and his disciples. He told them that they are ministering to him when they deal with people that have needs in the community around them. When we do something for somebody we're actually doing this for Christ. So that's how that all fits into what we're doing here today. If you're wondering when the last days are going to be and, and all that, we are in and have been in the last days since Christ established the church. Now, I, if you read the word and you look at it, and I'm not one of those guys that sit around trying to predict when all this is going to come to a conclusion or come to a head. Uh, I just know that for me, I know he's coming. Tomorrow he's going to be closer to coming than he is today. i got to be ready when he comes. That's my, that's, and I want, as the pastor here, my total main desire would be to please the Lord, and by pleasing him, it's how I please him, is by sharing the good news and helping people to be ready when he comes. That's, that's my goal, and I'm sure most pastors would share that same thought. We're going to fall short. We're not going to make it to heaven if we get wrapped up in self, if we become lovers of self. So today, we need to be reading the Word. We need to know who Jesus is, and, and we do that by spending time together as brothers and sisters in the Lord, in, in every opportunity that we can get, whether at church or in our families or wherever we're at. Christ ought to be the center. If not mentioned, he better show up as activity that is centered on, on Christ. We don't gather anywhere that we don't already know that Christ is there and in the part of and wants to be part of that. When we involve him in our day-to-day -day functions, activity, we're going to be successful. We're going to learn more of who he is and, and less about my desires, my wants. Our culture, it has a new to this idea probably in the, from the 1980s on, and it's gotten considerably worse as the time goes on, 
is that we become, our culture is kind of tending toward, trending toward becoming consumed with self. And you can look back. You, I don't need to look at the, all of our restaurants. When I was growing up, the only restaurant that we could go basically to in a bar and just get, get what we want was, was McDonald's. That kind of an idea was not booming. It hadn't started yet. And then you see commercials for other stuff as it goes. And they, uh, you deserve a break today when you hear that kind of a uh, talk. And, and it's just one thing after another until Satan has got to a place today that, that it's not looked down on to, to maybe stand up against God. You wouldn't have thought of anybody doing that. It wasn't even in the, our mentality to battle against God or openly say things that were anti-Christian. Today, it's almost the opposite. It's getting close to where we almost have to watch what we say if we want to stand up and voice a prayer in a restaurant. It's very likely that if it's crowded in there, somebody's going to make a negative comment to you. And maybe if you're in the right spot, somebody would come and attack you verbally. We're in that kind of a place. If we're not careful, if we don't take heed to this message today, we can fall trapped into the trap that Satan has laid that will consume us and take all of our time to take care of me. I don't have to take care of me. God knows me better than I know myself, and he's more than willing to run my life and manage it so that it can be done correctly. And I believe that if I let him manage my life, he's going to do such a much better job of it than I am doing, that he will allow people to be saved and encouraged and influenced by the things that he's saying through me. Not up here necessarily in church always, but in wherever I'm at. We all have that opportunity to be witnesses for him. He wants us to be effective, good witnesses for him. When it comes to us being uh, taken care of, being hopeful, being getting things that we, we need and, and want, I'm not the, I'm not the uh, solution to this situation. God is. He's the one. Satan would have us to believe that nobody can look out for you except you. Ultimately. That's not the way it is. The Holy Spirit is living in the life of those that love the Lord is looking out for us all the time, continually. And he wants us to succeed, and the best way that that happens is when I follow the leading of his spirit that lives in me. What I would be saying, what I would be doing for work, for whatever, and I'm never, it's never about my agenda, but his. We have to be on our guard to fight against the urge to pad myself with all kind of pushy things in this life, to think that that's the most beneficial to me. God knows our needs, and he's going to meet my needs better than I can do it myself. We become obsessed with life, family, stuff, we have dreams of vacations. We have dreams of places that we would like and houses and cars and all of the different things that, that we can get wrapped up in that in the scheme of eternity matter zero. Really, zero. And Satan wants us to be so attached to those things 
that were that, that are that are that are best, we won't dig into Christ enough, and we'll go through life not abundantly blessed, but just blessed. And it always amazes me that Christians will be that were that will automatically, not automatically, but what's the word I'm looking for here, that will, without anybody pressing them, we give up some of the blessings, some of the good things that God has for us so we can keep going on things that we think are so important. The best that we can do is to follow Christ. He's going to lead us down paths in life that's going to allow us to start storing up more treasure in heaven. We need to have treasure in heaven. We need to be doing that so that we can live that abundant life that he's telling us that we that we would like to have and want to have and he wants us to have. I'm sure he's up there sometimes looking at us and saying, well, I wish that, I wish that he would just let me I, I got so much more for him. Me. God has for me, and I just let it go because I, I got my agenda. I'm, I'm more concerned about what I'm going to do. And I think I know better than God or better than Christ. And I don't. I don't. Today, lovers of self, is this this is like rampant in our culture and society today, not only here, but in other parts of the world as well. We have been so uh, abundantly blessed here that we are actually spoiled. We think that we need some of these desires that we have. In all reality, we don't need them. God has what is best for us, and he can give them to us if we'll let him, if we aren't lovers of self. We're not self-consumed. We're not, you know, and, and I'm not banging on us here today to say, quit your jobs and just own and set and, and love each other and do all. No. While you're at work, while you're driving down the road, while you're going to work, while you're coming home, think of the, what Christ would have you to do with what you are doing and what you have. How can you help your family more? How can you maybe help a co-worker or somebody? That's what it's all about. He has us in all these individual jobs that we own, we have. Why don't we use those for God's glory more than we, than we do? No, we're obsessed with hobbies, work, vacations, More, uh, more pleasure doesn't equal more fulfillment. We can get all that we want, and next year we want that much and more. I'm not happy if I got a huge buck that I've never got before, but would like to have. If I got one, I would not say to the Lord, awesome, this is great, I don't need one more, I got everything. Next year I would do more work trying to get another one. And so we do that, we're building, I don't have to, that's in us. We have to somehow figure out a way to minimize my desires to let Christ come in and do what he wants to do. Look at all of the stuff that we have available to us to be able to satisfy self. There's books out there, there's conferences, there's counselors, pastors, po uh, podcasts, and blogs, and blogs, not blogs. There is blogs, too. <laughs> uh, we got all this stuff. We can spend our whole time, and not to mention all the... the social media with all of our phones and gizmo gadgets. We don't even, what, I thought I was busy when I was raising my family and doing all that. I didn't even have a phone. 
it worked with me. I, I spent uh, probably 45 out of the 65 years that I am, uh, almost almost 66, uh, without all the gizmos and gadgets. I got home and checked my phone at home to see if I had any people that I needed to go see to, for, to look at a job. I didn't have my kids call me from wherever they were at or text me. Uh, there was none of that. And then to see it all kind of come into, I'm kind of a little in the uh, older uh, centuries. <laughs> I'm, I'm of the old school, more or less. I, I don't see where all of this is bad, but it's we are we can't even set in our families at Thanksgiving or Christmas that we have everybody on the same page, unless they're talking about the same page on the on the Facebook or on all that. I looked around about, oh, I don't know, probably seven or eight years ago, and I had the, all my sons and their families were all at our house. They were sitting on the steps, going upstairs, they were on the couch and on chairs and all, and everybody was laughing and smiling about something else on the internet that they were looking at on their phone. They, they weren't communic we weren't even really uh, together uh, in that, other than that we were together in the house and and all that. So we have everything that we have. We can't wait till tomorrow. We can get it today. We can get it this minute. I'm from the thinking that when you discuss something about buying something, that's going to take a day or two to go look at this and look at that. No, 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 no way. We look and decide that we're going to buy something and we can get on the phone and, and go to the place and, and push a button and it's on its way. It'll be here in a three or four days. It'll be here. We'll tell you when it's coming. Okay? So we can buy stuff. We can do anything we want almost. And all of this stuff, I can see Satan setting up in his, wherever he's at, smiling and laughing. He says, I almost have them. I got them so consumed with their work and with raising a family, but now I got this this new uh, technology that I can consume even their thoughts. I up until the time they nod off to go to sleep, and I think even then we've been on it so much that we even dream about it at night. It's hard for us. Let's hear what Christ said on the way, if we want to be his followers, if we want to be, have that abundant life, here's, here's what we, Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. It's not that. I, I got two verses here. I, I got to do that. Luke 9, 23 tells us from Jesus' word what we need to do to do that. Not Luke 9, 23. Keep your finger in Matthew 22, verse 39, because we're going there shortly. Then he said to the crowd, If any of you want to be my followers, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, and follow me. I don't know about you, but it seems to me, for me, that I've been taking up my cross daily and following myself, mostly. Very seldom do I consult the Spirit to say, what do you have for me today? Should I even do this today? We just do what we have planned, and if God wants to change it, he'll throw some catastrophe in front of us that makes us completely stop and not be able to go there. And I've heard people say, I was doing this thing and I was headed my own merry way and, and God stopped me. And I've even heard people say that that's how you do it. You just make your plans and let God change them if that's, that's what. Okay, if, if you're not real connected to the Spirit, that, that could work, I guess. But wouldn't it be a lot better to know when you 
said, I, that I'm doing what the Lord has asked me to do today, to go and do it. Now, for those that get up at 5 or 6 in the morning and go to work and come home at 4 or 5, uh, you probably ought to plan to do that on a daily basis. Otherwise, somebody will do that job more efficiently than you. Uh, so, yeah, we, we have to do that. But be open to what I'm going to do there while I'm on my way, when I'm getting gas, whatever I'm doing for that day, to be open for the Spirit to lead you to somebody to encourage uh, or just maybe help in some, some way. For us to do what God wants us to do, Matthew 22, 33, or 39 there, tells us what has to happen. It's verse 39, uh, 41, or 40 goes with it, but, but I'm, we're, we know, you know what that part of it is. It says a, a second, and when I say a second, I mean a, a second commandment is just as equal, you know, equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, I want us to get the, the idea today here that, that we are, the Word, the Holy Spirit, God, Christ, are trying to get us to let go of, of our self. To become His follower, we gotta, we got to become less selfish with what I want to do. I'm preaching to people today that are not that selfish. I, I, I would almost bet in here today that their people are following what God wants them to do. However, we, I, I want us to be a strongly, keenly aware Satan's plan is to slow us down away from the Lord. Speed up our life so fast that we don't have time to look around, to smell the roses, and just think that because life is so fast and I need a break and I need all this, that we forget that Jesus told us, if you want rest, come to me. I will give you rest. I always was amazed that people tell me, I couldn't come to church Sunday because it's the only day of the week that I have off and I need to rest. I want it so much to say to them almost immediately, you're, you're, you're giving up the true rest. Christ wants you to come to him so that he can give, really truly give you rest. I don't know about you, but I've always I've been in places where I thought I didn't have time to be at, and God wanted me there, and I went after against my better judgment, maybe, and got there, and God had something for me there. It blessed me more than I could ever, would have ever imagined. The very day that I didn't want to go is the day that I needed to be there, and he took me there and gave me what I needed to have. That's the kind of a God that we serve. He is not a God that's up there looking for ways to, to disrupt our lives. Unless we're headed for hell. And then he does definitely wants to disrupt that. He wants us to have an abundant life. He wants us to have everything that he wants needs us to have so that we can be uh, awesome witnesses for him. But we're satisfied with crumbs off his table instead of the banquet that's setting on top. He's got so much more for us that we, we don't take time to even recognize that it's there. Or to test him and see if he is good. If we want to get to where I'm sure Pam is at today, we're going to have to deny ourselves and follow Christ. That's where we need to do. If Pam was here today and she could tell us, she would say, I was abusive to myself as well. We're all taking care of self. That's our human nature. Our downfall is that we're human. And we think we need this or that and and, and we're not willing to just step back and trust in his spirit to, to help us in every aspect of our life and to get us to heaven with treasures on top of treasures waiting for us when we get there. 
Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, today we come to you and we thank you for your ever-present uh, life that you have for us, that we can be in you even when we're working, even when we're driving down the road, whatever we're doing, you are with us. And that you want to have us to, to follow you and, and seek you and, and do all these things. But the enemy is trying to stop us by getting us consumed and obsessed with self. So that we try to do all of these things and have all of the most glowing gifts and presents and toys and all the different things that we can come up with. Help us, Father, to trust in you. And it's not that we won't have all those things, but you will give them to us at the right time, at the right place, and help us to be thankful that we have them and know where they come from. We just love you today. We thank you and ask your uh, Holy Spirit presence in our life as we uh, continue our day-to-day -day life. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.